The first Donkey Kong Country was a big deal back in 1994, and there were more reasons for that than things to collect in Donkey Kong 64. It reinvented the dormant Donkey Kong franchise. It restored consumer interest in the Super Nintendo. It was preempted by a massive marketing campaign that included mailing VHS tapes to homes all over the United States. In 1994, this was a Donkey Kong country. And I still have the cassette tape to prove it. Of course, you know how things work in the gaming industry. Success begets sequels. And a year later, the immensely talented team at Rare took us back to the country once again. Only this time, they put the senior Simeon on the sidelines, gave the spotlight to Little Diddy, and made a new star in the process. This is Donkey Kong Country 2, Diddy's Conquest for the Super Nintendo Entertainment System. Most notably now, just as it was in 1995, is the absence of Donkey Kong. To many fans, myself included, the decision to put him in a non-playable role was questionable, to say the least. But it seems Rare really believed that their own character, Little Diddy Kong, was popular enough to carry this high-profile sequel. It was a bold decision, and while you can debate what Donkey Kong may or may not have brought to this game, its success without him is undeniable. So without Donkey Kong, the gameplay dynamics are a little different. Diddy and the newcomer Dixie Kong are a very unique pairing, a real shift from the traditional speed and power tandem of Diddy and Donkey Kong. Now, Diddy is once again the quicker Kong, but Dixie's long ponytail allows her to glide, a very useful tool for some of the more complex platforming in Donkey Kong Country 2. So basically, you have the same gameplay foundation in the sequel as you did in the original, but what makes it different is the structure that Rare built on top of it. The level design offers a perfect match for the abilities of the two smaller Kongs, trading brute strength for towering climbs, precise platforming, and much longer jumps. This game is simultaneously familiar and new, tweaking the Donkey Kong Country formula just enough to make it feel fresh. And a big part of that is the challenge level. Donkey Kong Country 2 is a much more difficult game than its predecessor, but the difficulty level climbs at a refreshing pace. You never get discouraged because the level designs focus more on rewarding the player than frustrating them. And it's a good thing, too, because this is a world you'll want to experience in its entirety. Like the first one, Donkey Kong Country 2 is an incredibly good-looking game, brimming with plenty of gorgeous environments and just fantastic art design. Now, the whole rendered 3D look had lost some of its novelty by this point, but it hadn't lost an ounce of its aesthetic appeal. Donkey Kong Country 2 looks and sounds every bit as good as the first game, and at times, it actually takes that occasionally eerie ambience even further. You know, another thing I really like about Donkey Kong Country 2 is the way it ties the larger Donkey Kong franchise together. The game picks up with a pirate motif, picking up right where the previous game left off and creating a real sense of continuity. And then there's little things like those aforementioned climbing levels with rope layouts and climbing animations that just scream Donkey Kong Jr. And it really offers a vine, so to speak, between the old and the new. Now, it's hard to say this sequel is better than the game before it, but just as Donkey Kong Jr. improved on Donkey Kong in some areas, so too does Donkey Kong Country 2 make improvements to its formula. And frankly, this was a peerless game in 1995, and more than a decade and a half later, Diddy's Conquest still is.